Hi, I'm Tim and welcome to this video. Well, what can I say? Grandstream have done it again with the newly released GCC 6020, which is their new all-in-one convergence device. And it's the new model for this one, the GCC 6010. So what we're going to do is in this video, we'll get this unboxed and take a closer look at what's inside the box and then we'll go through the features and specifications. And then in a follow-up video, what we'll do is we'll get it installed, which I'll show you me installing it in my network cabinet. And then what we'll do is get it set up ready for internet access and also connected to my Grandstream GWN 7822P BOE multi gigabit network switch. So what we'll do is get right to it now, take a look inside this box, see what this has to offer, go through the features and specs. And here we are with the box. So let's get it open and take a look inside. We get the usual quick installation guide here and this covers both models. So it covers the GCC 6020 and also the GCC 6021. So it's a comprehensive guide you get here with pictures, diagrams and so on. And of course you can just scan the QR code there to get more documentation from the Grandstream website. We also have the certificate of regulatory information here and inside the box in the side panel we get the earthing connector screws and also some pads which you stick on the bottom should you wish to mount your GCC 6020 on a shelf or a desk for example then they provide these self-adhesive rubber feet here and of course the earthing cable is if you're earthing your devices in a network cabinet for example and there's also a set of screws there for the rack mount ears and also for connecting the earthing cable there. We also get the UK power lead. So there's no power brick with this. It has a built-in power supply, which is good to see. And then we also have a cable tie at the back. Now, this is a grip which you connect to the back of the device and it stops the power lead from being accidentally pulled out. Then we get the extended rack mount ears. So there's a set of two here. I'll just take them out. And here you can see the two extended rack mount ears. So this part, which is the shorter part, will go to the side of the device like so. And then these will be connected into the rack. So you get those either side like so. And then the device will be in the middle. In the box we have then which is in a plastic bag and also in the plastic bag you also get a little sticky label with the MAC address and also the factory default password which Grandstream always provide with their devices. So let's just move the box out of the way and take a closer look at the GCC 6020. So here it is. Now I can see from the front immediately that it has a textured front rather than the shiny one that is shown on the Grandstream GWN 7822P switch that has a shiny front on it which is a gloss based front whereas this is more sort of a matte textured front. Now I do actually like this better than the shiny fronts on the devices to be honest. That's just a personal choice of course. Now looking at the front we get four one gigabit so these are one gigabit RJ45 ports and there's four of those and these are all PoE plus so they support PoE and PoE plus. There's also then which is port number five so there's port one to four which are the one gigabit RJ45 ports and then we get port 5 which is the 2.5 gigabit PoE plus port so that supports PoE and PoE plus as well so you get in total five PoE plus ports now the maximum wattage for these PoE plus ports is 120 watts 
for the maximum of all the ports in total. Then we get a SFP Plus port. Now on the previous device, so the GCC6010, it was only a 2.5 gigabit SFP port. So this is a major upgrade here with the SFP Plus port being 10 gigabits. Now it's a, as I've said, SFP. So there's the SFP cage here. So you'll need an SFP module or a fiber module to go into this. So um, that has a rubber stopper over the front, which protects it from dust. And that has the usual G logo for Grandstream on it. Then we have a console port here which I tend not to use to be honest, but it's good for debugging purposes and getting into the console itself, which you never really need to do to be honest, very rarely. Then we have a USB 3 port, so that can be used for example to put say a flash drive in or should you wish to update the firmware for example by a flash drive, then you could use it or you could connect a USB printer to that as well. And moving back, to the left hand side, we have a recessed reset button there, which you use a pin or for example, some small headed screwdriver to push it in the hole to factory reset it. Then we have a system LED, which is multicolored. We have a power LED, and then we have an RPS LED as well. So the RPS is for the redundant power supply which takes me on to the back. So at the back, we have the RPS connector here, which is for the redundant power supply. So that is a 12 pin redundant power supply connector. So that has a rubber cover over it. So just put that back on. Then we have the grand stream label with the power requirements. And then we have the power connector, which is 100 and up to 240 volts and it works at 50 or 60 hertz. Then just below the power connector here, we have a hole there which is used for the cable tie there. So this is to go into the hole there and then you will connect it, the power lead through that connector to stop it being pulled out. And then we have a label with the serial number, MAC address and also the device password. So that it's the factory default device password, which are all different with Grandstream. Then at the far right side, we have an earthing terminal. So there's a screw there where you connect the earth cable, which is supplied, as I've said, and that goes onto the terminal there. And then you would earth it to a relevant earthing point. So moving to the right side, if you're looking at it from the front, that is, we have a ventilation grill here. So it's, there's no fans in this, it is actually passively cooled. So that's why, hence the grill is there at the right hand side. And if we look at the left hand side as well, there's also a grill there and that's the ventilation grill. So as I've said, it's passively cooled, so it's silent in operation. So this weighs in at 1.5 kilos, so it does have a little bit of weight to it, but of course it's not overly heavy and it's shorter than the standard 19 inch devices, hence the reason why they've got the extended rack mount brackets here so that it fits the standard 19 inch rack or cabinets. So a nice little device, and I have to say, I appreciate the upgrades with the SFP being and now an SFP Plus port at 10 gigabits and also with the upgraded RJ45 ports for the PoE requirements and the PoE budget as well. It certainly makes the difference having the bigger PoE budget at 120 watts and also these being PoE Plus as well. And of course, the 2.5 gigabit port there, which is port number five. So what I'll be doing is connecting my WAN connection. So the internet will go into the 2.5 gigabit as I have a currently a 1.2 gigabit download and one gigabit upload fiber connection, which is soon to be upgraded to 1.2 gigabits upload and also 1.2 gigabits download. So I'll be connecting my one connection to port number five, so the 2.5 gigabit port. And then what I'm hoping to do is connect the SFP Plus port via a fiber cable into my Grandstream GWN 7822P multi gigabit switch. Now onto the specifications for this. 
it can have up to three one ports so you can use any of these ports as one port so it can have up to three WAN connections the memory in this is four gigabytes of ram it also has 32 gigabytes of emmc storage and also at the bottom here which i didn't mention is a m2 ssd slot to extend the storage further should you so wish so this is an m2 ssd slot here the ipsec vpn throughput is rated at 1.3 gigabits per second the nat sessions is rated at 320k and the ngfw throughput for the dpi and ips data throughput is rated at 6 gigabits per second and i should say that the router is rated at or router whichever you like to call it is rated at 6.5 gigabits per second so it can route up to 6.5 gigabits per second for the pbx which is built into this it comes default with 50 users and up to 16 concurrent calls by default and that is a lifetime license so it never expires so you never need to renew your user or concurrent calls license for this it lasts for the life of this device it can be desktop wall or rack mountable as you know with the rack mount here and that's what i'll be doing i'll be rack mounting it so i'll show you that in the second upcoming video for this the leds so we have one for the sfp which is just at the top here which is a small little arrow and that's the led for the sfp plus port and then there's five leds for each of the other ports to show the data and poe status so there's two leds on each of the rj45 ports one is for the data one for the poe status also the system light so that is a multicolor LED so it goes red green and blue for device tracking and status identification and then the single LEDs for power and then the single LED single color LED is for RPS as well the connection type can be DHCP static IP or PPPoE for the WAN connections it supports IPv4 IPv6 and also IEEE 802.1Q, 802.1P, 802.1X, 802.3 and 802.3U and also 802.3X and 802.3AB. It also has QoS features so it supports VLAN, TOS, supports for multiple traffic classes, filter by port, IP address, DSCP and releasing. For the app QoS it supports application, protocol monitoring and also traffic statistics. It also supports voice over IP prioritization and for the firewall which it has a very comprehensive firewall in this which has DDNS, port forwarding, DMZ, UPnP, DOS, roofing defense, traffic rules, NAT, DPI, antivirus, IPS, IDS, SSL proxy as well on the firewall. For the content control, so it has great content control filtering in this. Also DNS filtering, web URL, class key, words filtering, application identification and control. There's also email security and geo IP filtering as well. For the VPNs, you could have say port one as your WAN connection, so your default WAN connection. Then you could have another WAN connection for your VPN connections. And for the VPN, it supports IPsec, client to site, site to site, and also encryption 3DES AES. For the IPsec authentication, it's MD5, SSH, SHA1, SHA2256, and it also supports NAT traversal, VPN server or client, PPTP encryption is MPPE 40 bit or 128 bit. For the PPTP and L2TP authentication, it supports MS Chat version 1 or 2 and also L2TP. Now, for the VPN, it has OpenVPN server and client and also WireGuard. So it supports OpenVPN, WireGuard, and also PPTP and also IPsec L2TP. Now, personally, I would use this with WireGuard or OpenVPN, so those are the two sort of main ones I would choose to use. 
for network management, this can manage itself as it has a built-in web management interface. But not only that, it can also be act as your controller to manage your other grand stream devices as well. So this could be the built-in local controller to act and manage your wireless access points and also your network switches all in this one device. So you've got a built-in local network controller that doesn't have to use the cloud if you so wish. Or you can just use the Grandstream GDMS system, which is Grandstream's cloud system to manage all of your devices, including this. Now for the management options, it can manage up to 300 GWN access points and also up to 500 clients. So that is it for the Grandstream GCC 6020, which is their new version of the GCC 6010, or should I say, alternative version should you wish to have one which is higher powered in the second video which will be coming up soon after this one i'll be showing you me installing this in my network cabinet and what we'll do is get it set up and working as well how far we go into the in-depth of getting it set up and working depends on the time of the video and how long the video goes on for but i can always do a follow-up video after that so thanks for watching this video. Hope you found this video useful. Hope you're liking it and looking forward to the next episode. So take care and bye for now.